Let's take a look on the following two examples, which are related to the double slit experiment. And now we have a wireless light direct to the double slit, and we have the path difference of the point P on the screen. So you can refer to the figure. Okay, we know the path difference is 900 nm. And the first statement is whether the P is the second bright fringe. So how do we know? We have to use the path difference is equal to the n lambda, which is always true for any case of constructive or destructive interference. So we have the value of the path difference and also have the value of the wavelength. So we can calculate the n is equal to 2. So the first statement is correct. And how about whether it will change into the dark fringe with the wavelength is changed. So we can use the same equation again, but this time we change the lambda into 600 nm. And now we can calculate the n is equal to 1.5. So 1.5 means it is in between the first order and second order, so which is a dark fringe. And how about if the distance of the screen is doubled, then what will happen? Uh, so let's consider the figure again. We have drawn an other screen which is double the distance than before. And now we can consider if we still put the point P at that position. So let's consider what will be the new position of point P. We know that the distance between the P and the center is the same. So we can use the delta y equals to lambda d over a to do so. So we substitute the new delta y and then the distance is doubled. So we can have the new delta y in terms of the old delta y. So we know that the distance from the p to the center is just one delta y. So it is not a dark fringe, instead it is the first order bright fringe. Now you may need to have some more time to digest it, then you can pause the video to consider it. And if the separation is changed, then what will happen? If the separation of the two slit becomes too far, actually there is no interference can be observed. So the least separation should be around 0.5 nm millimeter. And what, which of the following will result with a greater fringe separation? We can use the delta y equals to lambda d over a to consider it. So if we use the red like source, that means the wavelength is longer, so the delta y will also be longer. And if we have a greater slit separation, that means we change the a, we increase the a, then what will happen? If we consider the equation, if we increase the a, then the delta y will be decreased. So the second statement is wrong. And then we can use another double slit with a greater slit width because the slit width is not related to the slit separation. So if we have the same slit separation, then nothing will change here about the fringe separation. And if we increase the separation between the light source and the double slit, okay, that means we change the distance between the light source and the slit, actually it's not related. And finally, if we put it into water, then what will happen? If we put it into water, that means if we consider v equal f lambda, the v, the speed will be decreased. So the lambda is also decreased. And we can use the double slit equation again, then we can get the result. It won't increase the fringe separation. Okay, so let's take a look for the last examples here. Oh, it this is quite an interesting example. It's about changing the setting of the double slit and to see what will happen. Now, so suppose we have a light source and a double slit and we have two slits. 
This time, one slit is narrower than the other one. So we can consider the first figure here. What will happen? Now, actually, the lights can still pass through both of them, but the wide one, the light, will pass through it easier, so it will have a high amplitude. That means the light pass through it is brighter than the light passing through the narrower slit. So since the amplitude of the light from the two source are not equal, that means the light passing through S2 will be brighter than the S1. So can you imagine the destructive interference is not complete because it cannot able to cancel out all of the light. And so the interference cannot be observed because the contrast between the uh, destructive interference and the uh, constructive interference is not that clear. So we have this conclusion. And how about the second case? If we consider this time, the slit have the same separation, but the width of the slit is double. Okay, that means the slit itself is wider. What will happen? Uh, if we understand the idea of diffraction, we know that if we have a smaller slit, then it will diffract more, we we'll have a higher degree of diffraction. So as we draw in the figure here, you can compare the first one and second one. The second one is wider, so it will have a smaller degree of diffraction. What will happen to the fringe pattern? The one with a high degree of diffraction, more light will be overlapped. So we have more large area for us to see the interference pattern. But for the other one, if the degree of diffraction is lower, then the area that the two light source overlap will be smaller. So in that case, if we use the one with a wider slit, the light intensity will increase, but the less number of fringe can be observed. Since the degree of diffraction at both slits will become smaller. So as a result, extent of the overlapping area will be decreased.